A Hatter's Tale, George M. Keebler. This history behind the paper was inspired by the straw builder style hat that I purchased for $1 at a rummage sale. The maker, Keebler, was printed on the inside of a hat and it intrigued me to look into the history behind the hat. So I present A Hatter's Tale. George Michael Keebler was born in Camden, New Jersey on November 6, 1876. Thanks to the wonderful website Ancestry.com, we can see what George looked like as a little boy. Looking quite the gentleman, even as a young man, George saw much in his early years. The death of his two-month-old sister, the death of his one-year-old brother, and the death of his mother when he was only 13 years old. George would enter the world of hats in his early 20s, first starting out as a hat salesman. In the 1910 census, George's occupation would no longer be listed as a salesman, but as a hatter. George would marry Marie, Marjorie, in July 1900, and they would have two daughters, Mildred and Marie. Mildred would only live to be 36 years old, passing away from rectal cancer. Strangely enough, George would also pass away due to colon cancer in 1947. Bird spent a good number of years as a hatter, but in 1925 would file for bankruptcy and put the contents of his shop, showcases and all, up for auction. As you can see in this ad, I found for the auction, stock and fixtures of Keebler's hat store, six floor cases, 14 sliding glass door wall cases. Can you imagine what those must have looked like? They must have been beautiful. A, a steam straw hat press, hat stands, window and store fixtures, tip punching machine, two national cash registers, 2,000 new straw hats, 100 new top coats, etc. To be able to travel back in time and attend this auction, I can only imagine what it must have been like. George would pass away at the age of 70 on July 20th, 1947. His obituary recalls his hatter days and makes mention of his involvement in the Masons. George's wife, Marie, would pass away in 1974, living to be 94 years old. Both George and his wife are buried at the West Laurel Hill Cemetery, which, for a fun fact, holds a Cinema in the Cemetery series during the summer where people can watch movies among the gravestones. While some people might find that offensive or rude to those in the cemetery, I kind of find it a rather nice idea because it allows for those that are buried there to have their names on their stones seen once again by people to perhaps be remembered and maybe even have someone jot down a name that they think is nice and that they might want to do a little research on. And so that person can once again be discovered and be remembered much like George here. I hope you enjoy the rest of this little history behind the paper. I've included a few advertisements for the Keebler Hat Company. Mm -hmm.